So, hello there, and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Henry Bakshi, and this time you're going to be going over another question that someone from India called Pravanya sent me. So, this is one of my viewers, and again, I'm going to be solving this question, uh, and here's a clip of their question. Hi, Denme. I'm Pravanya, and I'm from India. I want to know that what is mass and what is weight, and what are the differences between the two of them. I'll be eagerly waiting for your video. Thank you. So now I'm going to try my best to answer the question and also explain the difference between mass and weight. Let's get started. And so these are the things I'm going to be explaining in this video. See all of them at once for now. Uh, and so uh, right now you'll be, be able to click on any one of these and you'll be able to skip to whichever part you like. So I'll give you a moment to do that. Anyway, let's get started. So first of all, in this video, I'm going to define what mass and weight are, tell you the units that you use for both, tell you about the constancy of mass, tell you the instruments that you use to measure them, and also what the difference is between scalars and vectors and how they're actually related in helping us see the difference between mass and weight. Let's get started. Uh, so first, I'm going to define mass and weight. So now, uh, the definition of mass would be the amount of matter or the quantity of matter that some object contains. For example, this eraser, or I could even say this marker, or I could even say an atom, or I could even say the Earth, or the Sun, or the Moon, or Mars, or Jupiter, or Neptune. Or all those planets, everything has mass. Everything, even the air you're breathing right now has mass. You have mass, I have mass, this shirt has mass, this microphone has mass. Everything does. However, weight, that's, compl that's very, very subjective to where you are at the time. Uh, because if you're uh, over here on Earth, you'll have weight. Uh, this marker will have weight because we're on Earth. But on, in space, it won't, because weight is the amount of force that gravity is exerting on an object. Because on Earth, Earth's gravity is actually trying its best to pull the marker towards the center. However, in space, there's no force. Space doesn't care where this thing goes. However, the Earth does, and that means this marker has weight on Earth. Next topic units. So let's get started and now uh, let's actually see what units you can use in mass and what units you can use in weight. So first of all in mass you can use uh, the standard for the metric system, the kilogram or the gram. So that isn't writing too well, well it's just a second. Uh, so the kilogram uh, is around 1000 grams so that's pretty interesting. And then uh, for weight you can use newtons and also dynes and uh, of course you have to spell these uh, completely lowercase uh, because if you don't you're referring to the person Sir Isaac Newton uh, if you have the n capital uh, but if it's nice and small uh, then you're referring to the unit same thing with dynes however it's not just d-i-n-e-s I, I'm dynes uh, it's actually d-y-n-e-s that's how you do that. Oh yeah, and also uh, newtons are equal to one hundred thousand dynes, or you could say one newton is equal to ten to the power five dynes. Pretty big. Next topic: constancy. Uh, uh, yeah, and also, um, yeah, so let's get to the next topic, uh, and so the next thing uh, is, of course, going to be constancy, and so uh, before we continue, though, um, I'm going to just tell you, yeah, remember what I was, I, I remembered what I, I was forgetting, uh, yep, just like I told you about the powering over here, same thing over here, one kilogram is actually equal to 10 to the power of 3 grams. So that's also pretty interesting. It's just another way to word it. Uh, so instead of writing all those three zeros, just say 10 to the power of 3, which is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. Anyway, now let's actually start constancy. So what is constancy? Constancy means that whatever 
we're talking about will not change from place to place to place. For example, mass. Calculate the mass over here. It will not change if you go to the pole. It will not change if you go to the equator. Won't change if you go to the moon. Won't change if you go to the sun. Won't change if you go in space. The mass is always the same no matter what. That's it. This is it. There's all the contents inside of this in one little package of the marker. I can't do anything to this. This is the entire mass of the marker. Not going to change. Or at least not from place to place. However, uh, weight, and I'm just going to note that down so we remember, uh, does not change from place to place. Because mass will not change from place to place. It's that simple. However, weight, pretty different. Weight changes from place to place. And mark my words, this may change, not necessarily. For example, this marker. And also since weight is just the force, the amount of force that gravity is exerting on this marker, that means if there's less gravity over there, this will have less weight. If there's more gravity on the sun, obviously, this will weigh more on the sun. And so this marker, if you were to take this to the pole, measure it, it would be a little bit heavier than if you were to go to the pole and then measure, uh, or actually the equator, and then measure the uh, weight. Due to the fact that the pole is, is closer to the core of the Earth, which is where all the gravity comes from, meaning there's more gravity, however the equator's bulged out, not so close to the core, and stuff like that, I don't want to go into details right now. Anyway, uh, so now that you know that uh, weight will sometimes, may, change from place to place, let's talk about our next topic, which is the instruments used to measure both mass and weight. Let's get started here. So, uh, first of all, uh, the instrument for mass is actually something called a balance scale. But even before I tell you about that, I have to tell you that at the SI, which is located in France, uh, there's actually a little cylinder. Uh, sorry if I can't draw this too nicely here. There's a little cylinder of metal, uh, which is exactly one kilogram. And this represents one kilogram for all countries. There's some replicas of this thing. Uh, this is just exactly one kilogram. It's actually really safely guarded. There's no air that's going to touch it. It's completely put into two glass jars and everything. So this is exactly one kilogram. And so if you had a balance scale, which looks like this, by the way. So for example, there's a little floor. There's a triangle or something like that. There's a little plank here, or whatever you can call it. There's two pans on these sides. And so, you can put in like a weight, like one kilogram in here. And then over here, you could put lots of metals. I mean, yeah, so lots of metals. Like a pl you could even put plastic, wood, whatever you want in here. And the second that this balance is completely balanced, Whatever you put here is actually equal to one kilogram. Now you may be thinking, hmm, how does this calculate mass? We know that mass never changes, but if we were to calculate this on the moon, it would change. Well, you're wrong. This is due to the fact that gravity is equal on both sides. And because of its equalness, it just cancels each other out. And so, it doesn't make a difference if we're calculating on the moon, or the sun, or the earth, or Mars, or some other super earth, or whatever. Doesn't matter. Now for weight, of course, you could just use a weighing machine, but what's behind that? Nothing. So, I'm going to tell you the real classic way that you could do this thing. So essentially, we have a little ceiling here. Uh, there's a little uh, string, and then there's a spring. Right? Uh, and then there's a little string again. There's a box. It's full of whatever you put in it. Metal, 
this, that, etc., etc., plastic, rubber, whatever. And then there is going to be a little scale here. Actually, yep, yeah, a little scale here. And so uh, you will be putting, uh, there's a little arrow here, and it'll tell you, uh, the, oh, depending on how much this um, thing will stretch, it will tell you how big. The more it stretches, the more down it'll go, and that means the more uh, weight it has. However, if it doesn't stretch as much, it'll go up, and that means that there's less weight. That is exactly how that works. And then, of course, there would actually be lines that would tell you how many newtons or dynes and stuff. And yeah. In, in case you were wondering what a weighing machine does, uh, the weighing machine actually still gets your weight. Uh, however, what's going to happen uh, is uh, it will actually convert from newtons or dynes to kilograms or grams or something like that. Uh, because, of course, you wouldn't want to know that you're these many newtons. You would want to know that you're these many kilograms instead. Because, of course, uh, newtons aren't that much practical to be uh, measuring with uh, in a day-to-day -day basis. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, actually, I'm going to show, be showing you an example of the spring balance itself. Uh, so, let's get started. I wasn't planning to make this clip, but I found myself at my local supermarket and market. So, why not, right? So, here it is. Uh, this is the spring balance. the spring in the spring balance? Well, apparently, uh, the spring is inside of the actual scale uh, in a coiled fashion instead of a vertical. So if I pull down on this, the, uh, the spring is being stretched and it will increase the reading on the scale. So for example, uh, I can take something like a mango. Put it on. Don't pull on it, just display it's around half a kilo. Now if I put another mango, it's around 1 kilo. And one last mango, and it's around 1.5 kilos. So as you can see, uh, each mango is 1.5 kilos. Uh, All together, it actually uh, shows 1.5 kilos. So let's get started uh, now with the explanation. So what's happening uh, is that the mangoes are actually being pulled down by gravity. Uh, and so what's happening uh, is, the since the mangoes are being pulled down by gravity, the metal pan is also being pulled down by gravity. Uh, in turn, this is connected to lots of little chains connected to the spring. Since the spring is being pulled down on, its, uh, it's, its tension increases and the scale's pointer goes ahead. And you might be thinking, wait, this is weight. How is it giving us kilograms? Well, actually, it's, it's getting weight but converting to mass by dividing weight by 9.8. So it's actually weight, but in a mass unit. Uh, so again, it'll just divide by 9.8 and it'll get the mass. Uh, it's that simple, and yeah, now you can continue the video to learn all about how this works and etc. Okay, let's get started. So that was the instrument that you use to measure it. Now, scalars and vectors. Let's get started. So. First of all, I'm going to erase these instruments because I'm almost 100% sure that you've learned them by now, and we also need the space for scalar and vectors. Now, if you don't even know what a scalar vector is, well, I'm going to be explaining that to you right now with some examples. So an example of a scalar could be, oh, I don't know, uh, speed, distance, and there's a few more, which I'll talk about later. Actually, one more that I'll talk about later. For a vector, there could be uh, something like um, velocity and displacement. Not displacement. I'm actually going to rewrite that so you can actually see it. Uh, D. You can't see that. Yeah, so there's velocity and also displacement for a vector. Now I want you to find out what's common between velocity and displacement and what's common in speed and distance. And also what's the different what's the, like different from all these scalar options 
and all these vector options. If you didn't find it already, scalars have no direction. Vectors, however, have a direction. Speed, 24 miles per hour in this direction. Uh, actually, no direction, sorry. Just 24 miles per hour. You're not specifying if you're going nor north, west, east, or south. Uh, you're just saying, okay, I went 24 miles per hour. That's it. Distance, you're saying that is 5 meters away, or 5 kilometers away, or 5 these many, whatever the units you choose away. But you do not say what uh, direction they are. However, velocity, it's the same thing as speed. It's like, okay, 24 miles per hour, but you're specifying that I'm either going north, west, east, or south. And in this case, let's just say you're going north. You said the fact that velocity is first of all speed and also the direction. So it'll be 24 miles per hour going north. Displacement, uh, if you don't know what displacement is, I'm not going to be explaining that right now. Or actually, why not, right? Okay, so first of all, let's just say there's a little runner here. And then there's a track. This is 10 meters. This is 30 meters. And this is another 10 meters. The distance that he ran would be 50 meters. However, the displacement would only be 30 meters, and that too, east. Because he started off here, he ended here. And in order to draw a straight line, we would say, okay, we're gonna draw a straight line. This is exactly 30 meters, and that means his displacement was exactly 30 meters. And also, this is going in east, so his displacement was also east. It was 30 meters east. So that's how displacement works. Now you, might, you, now you might be asking, how does this actually help us with mass and weight? Well, of course, speed, distance, velocity, and displacement doesn't really help us with speed, uh, mass and weight, but there is one thing that does. The fact that mass is a scalar and weight is a vector. So now, how is mass a scalar? Take this marker, find its mass. Where did the mass come from? The marker. It didn't come from that chair, from me, from my shirt, from the moon, from the earth, from the sun. It's just its mass. It, nothing, it, if you were to take this into space, not, it wouldn't change. It's not coming from north, west, east, or south. That's it. That's how simple it is. However, weight is a vector due to the fact that the force, since weight is always uh, the force of amount, the amount of uh, force that gravity is putting on an object, so we could successfully say that the gravity is coming from down there in the Earth's core, meaning that the force is coming from downwards, meaning that weight has to be a vector due to the fact that it is getting all of its force from down there. Sorry. So now, just to go over really quickly before we end, uh, I taught you today about uh, the definition of both mass and weight, uh, the units uh, of both mass and weight, uh, the constancy of mass, uh, the instruments that you use to measure, and also the difference between scalars and vectors and how they help us in determining the differences between mass and weight. I hope that answers your question, Pravanya, and that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like. Uh, also, leave a comment if you have any questions, suggestions, app ideas, or video ideas. Uh, you can always even email me a question at tajimani at gmail.com. You can also email me a video of you asking a question, and I might just feature it in one of my new videos. Uh, and uh, also, if you like my content and you want to see more of it, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, and that's going to be it. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Just before I end, please do also follow me on Twitter. A link will be down in the description. Goodbye.